Are you looking to learn how the lookup activity works in Marxed Fabric data pipelines? That is going to be the topic of today's video. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Marxed Azure and Fabric related topics. And in this video we are continuing our journey with Marxed Fabric data engineering and we are going to cover the lookup activity in Marxed Fabric data pipelines. This video is also part of my Marxed Fabric data engineering series. A link to the playlist can be found in the description below. Also, it is good to keep in mind that videos in this series build concepts on top of the concepts covered in the previous videos. But now, let's talk about the lookup activity that is one of the most essential activities to learn in Max Fabric data pipelines, since it will allow you to fetch some data from a data store and use that data as part of your data pipeline processing logic. In this video I will first cover how the lookup activity works on conceptual level. Then we will have a demo slash tutorial where we use this lookup activity on a data pipeline in Microsoft Fabric. Let's get started. Let's imagine a situation where we have a Fabric data pipeline. In that pipeline we have a copy activity. We also have a lake house and in that lake house we have a configuration table. We would like to use the contents of this configuration table to instruct our copy activity to copy some data. How we would do this? Of course, we can use the lookup activity in the data pipeline and fetch the contents of the configuration table and have them available in our pipeline for our copy activity to use. Now let's take a closer look at how lookup activity works in data pipelines. The lookup activity can retrieve contents from a data set that is sitting in some data store. It has two options, to retrieve the first row from the data set or retrieve all the rows from the data set. However, there are some limitations on how much data the lookup activity can return. A maximum of 5000 rows and a maximum of 4 megabytes. After the lookup activity runs, the contents of its output can be used in the following activities as dynamic content. Content. Let's take a look at how the inputs and outputs work with the lookup activity. For example, let's have a lake house with a configuration table that has two columns, source file and destination table. On the first row, the source file is currency.csv and the destination table is currency. On the second row, the source file is money.csv and the destination table is money. We would like to use these values in our pipeline to copy the contents of the currency.csv to currency table in the lake house and money.csv to the money table in the lake house. This table will be the input for our lookup activity. Let's configure our lookup activity to only retrieve the first row. When our lookup activity runs, our output will be the first row of this table, meaning we only get the source file and destination table of the first row, currency.csv and currency. These two values are wrapped in an object called first row. Next, let's run our lookup activity again, but this time we will uncheck the first row only setting. Our lookup activity runs, and we see a different output. We get the count of how many rows were retrieved and the value array containing all the rows that were retrieved. In this case we have two rows so we get both the currency and money configuration from the configuration table. Now this output of the lookup activity would be then available to use in the following activities in our pipeline. For example, we could pass this value array for a for each loop and start to iterate it and do actions based on the configuration data. Now let's hop into Fabric and let's do a demo slash tutorial together so you can see how the lookup activity works in action. Also all the files that I will be using in the tutorial can be found by clicking the link in the description. But before we open up Fabric, I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Maxed Fabric content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's go to Fabric. Let's first open up my lake house where I have created a new folder Fabric DE Series 10 and in that folder I have two files, one CSV and one JSON file. In the CSV file I have a header and two rows of data and in the JSON file I have an array and two objects with two properties in each object. Some of you might recognize this content from the previous video on this series where we covered the for each activity and used this same data as our input for our for each loop. 
Now we would like to use the lookup activity to retrieve the content from these files so that we can use that content in our data pipeline for processing logic. So let's click create and select a new data pipeline and name that pipeline according to our naming conventions. Then we want to start with a blank canvas and just to add lookup activity to that canvas. So let's select it from the list of available activities. Then we want to open up the settings tab of our lookup activity and as a connection we want to use our lake house and change the root folder to files. First we can try to look up the contents of our CSV file. So let's point our lookup activity to that file by writing the folder first to our directory in our file path and after that we want to input the name of our CSV file to the file name field. Of course you could do the same thing by using the browse feature and find the file in our lake house but it is a slower way of doing things. Everything else should be correct since file format is already delimited text and our file should follow the standard delimited text configuration. We can then click preview to confirm that we have configured everything correctly. After our preview is done loading we can see that in our preview we only have a one row of data. If you remember our CSV had two rows of data and the reason why we are seeing only one row here is in our lookup activity settings. Since we have configured it to only fetch the first row only, since that is the default setting. Now let's deselect that setting and preview our data again and let's wait for our preview to load up. And now we can see both of those rows in our preview. Let's turn the first row only setting back on and then let's run our pipeline to see how does the output of our lookup look like. Now our pipeline is running and should be done quite shortly since lookup activity should be very fast activity to execute if files or tables are small. Now our pipeline is done and we can check the output. We can see that our output is a JSON object with a property called first row and in that property we have another object with true properties that match with the columns in our file. Next let's go back to our lookup settings and deselect that first row only option and run our pipeline again. And this time also our pipeline should succeed quite fast and now it is done and we can check the output. We can see that again our output is an object and now in that object we have two properties count and value. Count indicates how many rows were retrieved and in the value we have an array that contains those rows wrapped to objects. Next let's try to look up our JSON file. So let's go back to our lookup and change the file name of our file to point to that JSON file and then also we have to change the file format to JSON and leave the first row option off this time. Again let's run our pipeline to see how the lookup activity behaves with the JSON file. Then we wait for our pipeline to succeed and now it is done and we can check the output of our lookup activity that looks pretty much the same as with our CSV file. Next let's modify our pipeline a bit and add for each activity after our lookup activity since I want to show you how you can refer to that lookup activity output in the following activities. I already covered the for each activity in great detail in the previous video in this series so go check that out if you are not familiar with this activity yet. But now let's open the settings tab of our for each activity and use dynamic content for our item section. In our pipeline expression builder we can see this tab called activity outputs and here we can see some outputs from our lookup activity. If you remember our for each is expecting to have an array as input and when we don't have that first row only option selected in our lookup we will get that value array that we can then pass to our for each activity as input. That value array can be found from this activity output list and we can select that and click OK. Then we can add a wait activity to inside our for each just to see how many times our for each will iterate. Then let's click run and see what happens. Now our pipeline is running and should finish in just a moment since we are not running anything particularly heavy or time consuming here. Now our pipeline is done and we can see that our for each iterated two times since our wait activity was executed twice. Now let's break down a bit what happened here. 
First our lookup activity executed and fetched the contents from our configuration file. Then we passed the value array from our lookup activity to our for each loop, that is the activity that will iterate over arrays. Even though we didn't actually do anything with our configuration data inside our for each loop, you most likely get the point that now we could have had there for example a copy data activity that we could have used dynamically to copy files based on our pipeline configuration. We are going to come back to this concept of using lookup activity and for each activity to build these configuration based or metadata driven pipelines. So don't worry if you didn't manage to understand that well what was happening here. We will come back to this. Also, I want to note that even though we used files in this example, the process is pretty much the same to every other data store. So it doesn't really matter if you, we are using files or tables as a source for our lookup activity. The outputs from the lookup activity will be the same. I hope you now have an understanding how lookup activity works and what kind of outputs it provides and how you can use those outputs in the following activities as dynamic content. If you want to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.